Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can get inspired and get ideas for your after school classes. Hey guys, this is really bothering me, but I did not realize that I was off center whenever I shot this. So um, it is really bothering me and I really wanna reshoot it, but I wanna get this video out to you guys today, so I'm not going to, but just know, I know it's bothering me too, but let's just get through it together. A common concern that I do hear from my referrals is that they know what topic they want to teach or what subject, but they're not sure how they can take that topic or that subject and narrow in and focus in on one specific class idea. And so today I'm going to show you several examples of how you can take a topic idea and how you can narrow in and focus on a specific class for out school. Now there are some class topics and some class subject areas that are a little bit more difficult to do this with, but I'm going to be showing you some of the examples that I've done with my referrals and how they've given me a topic that's a little bit more difficult and how I've helped them narrow in and focus in on one specific class idea. If you are new to this channel, please be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss any future out school videos. I do post out school videos every single week. And if you have some ideas for upcoming out school videos, then please leave those in the comments below and I'll be sure to check those out and try to use those in my upcoming videos. All right guys, so we're gonna hop onto my computer and I'm gonna show you how you can get inspired and get ideas for your out school classes. Okay, so the first step is that you wanna find standards for the topic or the subject that you wanna teach. Now I live in Texas, so I use TEKS. Um, but you don't have to use um, the standards that go with your state because you're not going to be listing this anywhere in your class description. Um, but you can use Common Core um, or you can use TEKS or whatever standards are in your state. So I just searched Texas TEKS and I'm going to click on this first web page. From there, you have to narrow in on what subject you want to teach. Now, if you are not sure, then I would just go to you know um, ELA first and then you can start there and then go to math and then go to science and then kind of narrow in that way. But let's just start here with ELA. From here, you have to narrow in on what age level you want to teach, so I'm going to use elementary for this video. So from here, you focus in on what topic you want to teach. So if you want to do phonics, then you can do um, Command F on your computer and do phonics, and then it's going to show you what grade levels um, are still learning phonics. So it's um, through kindergarten, um, up through second grade, and I think even third grade too, but this just kind of gives you um, an idea of what grade levels and what age ranges are learning that topic. From here, you want to focus in on a specific class idea. And so for the sake of this video, I'm going to do um, rhyming words. Okay, that is one subset of phonics. Okay, um, from there, I want to find some resources that I can use that go with rhyming words. So I'm going to go to Teachers Pay Teachers. I'm going to go up to the top and I'm going to search in rhyming words. Here are some resources that you could potentially use in your classroom. So you can kind of scroll through here and see what appeals to you and your teaching style. But I'm just going to show you an example. So I'm going to go right here to rhyming words unit. If I wanted to use this resource in my classroom, um, then I would like to ask for permission. I want to scroll down to Q&A. From here, I can ask the seller directly if I have the permission to use this in my online classroom. Here's a script that I usually send out, and with this script, I've always gotten a positive response and gotten yes. Um, I say, hello, I'm an online teacher. Do I have your permission to use this resource in my online classroom? I will not post for download on the internet or share with other teachers. I will only share this with my students in my closed classroom. So that is what you could send to ask for permission, and then you can check um, email when the seller responds, and then you will get an email response whenever they respond back to you. Next, you want to figure out a way to make your class interactive and fun for the students to practice and kind of end class on a really positive high note. So I really love Kahoot, so I'm going to search in rhyming words. Lots of results come up here that you can use in your classroom, so I'm going to click here. Now, if you're dealing with younger students, I would not have them use their own device for Kahoot. I would just click play now. You as a teacher use your own cell phone, put in a class name take turns answering questions, um, call on students, answer questions, and then play as a class. If you wanted to use some of these questions but not other ones, you could click the three dots right here and click duplicate. That's gonna make a copy of this on your Kahoot account and then you can add questions in, you can delete questions, change the picture, change the answers, and edit it however you want. You can also click assign and you can assign them a link after class to play this game for more practice at home and parents love that. I will create a separate tutorial on Kahoot later on to show you in more depth how I use Kahoot in my classes. This is just a general starting point. Okay, so next I'm gonna show you one for math. Okay, I'm gonna click math. I'm gonna go back to elementary, same as before. Now all of these teaks could be a class idea on its own, um, or you could offer a series of classes, maybe like a multi-day class, where you focus on numbers and operations for that grade level, and then in your class you cover all of these different standards um, and this kind of gives you a way to plan out your classes and you know what you're going to teach each class. 
in your class description, you can outline for the parents what they're going to learn in your class and also what age range that appeals to. So you can say, this is perfect for your kindergartner um, or for your first grader that maybe needs some review. So I'm going to take this one standard, count forward and backwards to 20, and that could be one class idea on its own. I'm going to go back to Kahoot and I typed in count forward and backwards. I'm going to go to kindergarten for the grade level. And then here are some resources that I can use in my classroom if I ask for permission. So say I wanted to use this resource right here. These are boom cards, which I have heard about, but I have not explored them um, in detail. So if you know what boom cards are and how they're used, um, feel free to comment down below and let us all know because I'm really curious. Um, but say you wanted to use this resource, scroll down, um, Q&A, um, same script as I showed you before, and then you can ask for permission to use this resource. So this could be how you teach the topic, um, and then you can use a Kahoot to maybe end class and um, play a game to review. If you didn't want to use Kahoot in your classes, then you could always play bingo. Um, also, that is a really fun way to get your kids to practice. Um, I do have a video out where I show you how to make bingo cards on Canva. I will link that above if I can figure out how to do that. Um, and then you can always play bingo also. That is another fun way to end class and have kids practice. Science and social studies are two other really great class subjects that um, you can maybe offer classes in. So I'm going to go to science. I'm going to go to elementary again. I'm going to target more of the olders this time, and I'm going to scroll down to fifth grade. So if you wanted to offer a class on force, motion, and energy, again, this could be a series of classes where you meet with the same students maybe once a week for four weeks because there are four standards right here, and then you focus on one standard every week. If you wanted to offer a one-time class, then you can do that as well. So I'm going to focus on this teak right here, which is about mechanical, light, thermal, electrical, and sound energy. So I just typed in types of energy and then fifth grade. Um, and I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to only search for digital activities because we are online teachers. So if you wanted to um, only search for digital activities, you can do that. That way it narrows in on things that can be um, easily integrated online. And then it'll have this little label right here that says digital. And there are a lot of really cute ideas on here. Um, and then again, you would just go to um, product Q&A and then ask the seller for permission to use this in your classroom. You could then go to Kahoot and type in types of energy. For level, then you could do grade five. That way it kind of narrows in on your grade level that you want to teach. There are games on here that are already pre-made. Um, and if you did not want to use one that's pre-made, you can always create your own where you go up here to create. And you can put in your own pictures and your own questions. Um, or if you liked part of it, then you could again go to, to the three dots and then go to duplicate. And then you can add and edit from there. And for social studies, same idea. Click here. Back to elementary. So for social studies, I'm going to go to third grade. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to focus on this teak right here that talks about climate, landforms, natural resources, and natural hazards. Again, if you wanted to do a multi-day class, then you could focus on third grade geography and then um, offer a class that maybe meets um, once a week for five weeks or twice a week for four weeks. And then you could hit all of these standards. When you're creating your class listing, your class title could be um, second to fourth grade geography or it could be um, elementary geography. And then you could target these um, topics and then you could specify in your class listing that it's perfect for your on-level third grader, um, for your advanced second grader, or for your fourth grader that might need some review from the previous year. So I searched physical landforms, I went to third grade, and then here are a ton of resources that would be really great for that class. If you wanted to send students something um, before class um, as an attachment for them to print out and bring to class with them, then you could complete something together as a class. You could also use some of these resources um, as homework um, or to offer as extension for the parents. Um, I found parents really like the option to extend their child's learning outside of your class, and so offering something to um, do outside of your class I think would be a really great idea. And then if you wanted to end class in a really fun way, then you could find a Kahoot game to go with your class topic. Um, if the kids are older, I would say third grade and above, then they could use their own device and play this game. Um, or if they don't have a second device, then they can also play as a class. Um, if you're dealing with like the younger students, like I said before, I would just um, use your phone and then share your screen and then have them just um, raise their hand and then give their answers and then play that way where you would just select the answer for them and not have them have their own devices. Um, so it depends on what grade level and what age you're working with. Now for some of those more difficult subject areas like I was telling you guys about, um, Spanish is one of them um, where for my state at least, we don't have a set Spanish curriculum. Um, so you could just search um, Spanish scope and sequence elementary. Um, same thing if you're targeting more of like the middle school, high school levels, um, or you could also do um, Spanish curriculum elementary and see what pops up. But this was my search results and I clicked on the second one right here. I clicked on Spanish first grade. I scrolled down. 
And then here was their overview um, for one of their units. And so it said that it was six to eight weeks and the unit was over greetings. And then it kind of broke down um, what they're gonna be teaching during that unit. Um, and then at the end of the unit, students will know. So this would be great for you to put in your class description whenever you're describing your class to parents. In my class, students are going to learn how to say hello and goodbye, how to say good morning, good afternoon, good night. So this kind of gives you a guideline for what you're gonna list out in your class description and also a way for you to plan out your classes. Another topic that might be more difficult to find curriculum for would be like photography. So I did photography syllabus and just see what popped up. I scrolled down a little bit and I did um, introduction to photography course syllabus. Here is a general overview of what's gonna be taught in this course. So that might be helpful whenever you're planning out your class listing. If you scroll down though, it does tell you um, week by week what the assignments are gonna be and what the focus is gonna be for the learning. Um, so that might help you whenever you are planning out that class. So you could apply this concept to any topic that might not be found on a you know, state standards website. So you could just search that topic with syllabus or with um, scope and sequence or with the word curriculum and then see what pops up on the internet and that can kind of guide you in your class creation. So here's one other way that you could find curriculum for your out school classes. Um, I just went on to Teachers Pay Teachers and searched curriculum and then you can specify what subject area that you're wanting. So for example, say I wanted to do Spanish then I could specify what grade levels I would like. And then there are curriculum bundles that are already um, on here for me to purchase. Hopefully that video was helpful for you guys. Um, if you're someone that has just applied out school or you would like to apply, um, please reach out to me with any questions that you have. Um, I have my email down below as well as my referral link if you would like to sign up for out school. I'd be happy to help you get started and help you think of ideas for your classes and help you to narrow in on the focus of what you want to teach. If you just have questions about out school and you would like some guidance, um, then my email is down below. So please reach out to me. I'd be happy to help you. And that is it for today's video, guys. I will see y'all next time. Bye.